I would appreciate a comment on how uh, the idea of a, a bad tree not being able to produce good fruit plays with the concept of common grace. First of all, the doctrine of common grace, to put it mildly, I'm not too fond of it. <laughs> I don't think it's a biblical doctrine as it is commonly formulated. Van Til uses it because the Christian Reformed Church had a doctrine of common grace, but he reinterpreted it, and he says that what he meant by it was creation grace, that all things as God created them in the beginning were entirely good, that metaphysically all things continue to be good. Morally, all men are fallen and totally depraved, but not metaphysically, you see. The fall is not metaphysical. Our bodies, our minds have not become evil in their being, but in their moral nature, in which sense, then, they are totally depraved. The trouble with the doctrine of common grace is that it has become really almost identical with the doctrine of natural law in the Thomistic sense. And the Thomists have really gleefully uh, hailed the doctrine. What we do have in a culture is this. Our Lord says, ye are the salt of the earth. Now, salt is a preserving agent. So that when there are enough Christians in a community or in a nation who are strong and who exercise dominion, they give a grace to the society of character and the others are followers, and they follow that so that the ungodly are governed by it, restrained by it. So they are restrained by, you could call it, common grace. Now, in this sense, when the godly exercise their due powers under God, their calling to dominion, they're going to have an influence far beyond their circles, and they are going to be a restraint on other and more evil men. I know that in one classroom I was told of this once, which was quite a lawless group in a lawless situation. Whenever the teacher stepped, it was bad enough when the teacher was there. If the teacher had to step into the hallway, it was pandemonium. And on one occasion when they were taking a test, one student started to cut up and everybody else chimed in and one who was trying to do his work and wanted a good grade said, uh, shut up, please. Some of us are trying to take the test. And the fellow said, who's going to stop me? Well, there was someone who was relatively new, been transferred, and it was a good-sized, burly fellow who nobody knew. And he stood up and he said, I am. Mm -hmm. Sit down and shut up. Now, he exercised a certain dominion there, so that uh, you might say there was a common grace, in the sense that I mean it, in the classroom. They shut up. They respected his size. Well, we can exercise that kind of a power. But as far as the individual having a certain grace in him when he's reprobate, that's a contradiction in terms.